Today I'm going to be reacting and breaking down a song called A Theme of Laura from the Silent Hill 2 original soundtrack. You wanted it, you have it. Boom! No way. <laughs> the 90s vibes in this is crazy. <laughs> oh. So good. Oh my god. I feel like a kid again in the 90s. <laughs> So good. Oh, my God. Oh, so good. Mate, I've been missing out. I need to play Silent Hill 2 now. <laughs> Listen to the kick in the drum kit. It sounds so organic. That was great in the string, in the violin. It was a violin, I think. too good playlist i'm gonna I, I i hope this is on spotify whoa that was it right yeah that's the resolution the ending chord right there yeah well i think we know what's going to be already but <laughs> let's break it down I have to say that I'm very pleasantly surprised that there is a song like this in in a game like Silent Hill because as far as I'm concerned, Silent Hill as a franchise is a horror franchise. So listening to a track like this, which sounds almost like an angsty 90s uh, TV series, la la like a song you will hear in Dawson's Creek or something. <laughs> make it into into this game especially a japanese game you know now like i did mention during the reaction this has a 90s vibe on it it's right on on, on the spotlight of the alternative rock scene of the 90s maybe bleeding a little bit into the 2000s but i would say mainly from the from the 90s it kind of makes sense because i i think silent hill 2 was released around 2000 or 2001 so um 
it was bleeding a little bit further into the 21st century, let's say. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because the developers were developing this game during the 90s to the final leg to the 90s. So probably they were listening to this kind of alternative rock music while uh, in their daily lives where they were de developing the, this game. But of course, it would have to make sense that they would include this kind of genre in, in the video game itself so, uh, to make it work with the story and so on and so forth. And diving a little bit further into the alternative rock premise, you have all the usual suspects, as you could say. You know, you have the acoustic guitar doing the opening uh, with the chord progression. Then you have the overdriven electric guitars, you know, not so saturated that they would, uh, you know, mess with the clarity of the notes. Because remember, you, the chord progression is strong in the guitar. So you need clarity. And the way you achieve that is not is by not doing, uh, not putting a lot of overdrive or saturation in the guitar so that's why you can hear uh, the chords played in the electric guitar in a more clear way and of course they are drenched in reverb <laughs> that's like quintessential for this particular genre of music <laughs> One of the things that I was thinking while I was listening to the song is that this could be very well a single from a band from that era, you know, and I was thinking of bands that actually resemble this sound a lot and I would say like probably Garbage is one of them and another one's probably the one that is most spot on is the Cranberries, you know, from, from, from Ireland, you know, and other two ones... Uh, uh, bump into my head that are more recent like uh, there will be like metric and uh, silver sun pickups which i like a lot and actually this song is so awesome that it takes a risk while still maintaining all the single uh kind of song qualities that there are imbued into it especially at, at the very beginning of a song when you when we hear the intro there is a part that that is sort of a bridge put into the beginning of a song which also serves as the outro and the resolution of the whole track, which has uh, uh, these uh, different uh, uh, time signatures like 7 8 and 9 8, which is, you know, is not something that you will see often in, in rock music or at all. You will see always, you will always hear songs in 4 4. Now, to finalize my commentary, I just would like to add a little bit to the premise of the storytelling of a song because it's called Theme of Laura. It's very straightforward. It's the theme of one of the characters in the in the video game. I would say it's a, youth, a youthful uh, person, okay? Because remember, this game was released in 2001 and these kind of songs were more in the demographic of youthful people, you know, maybe people in their 20s, maybe early 30s probably a lot of people in their in their late teens okay it, it has that jolteful feel because that's the kind of music that were that was very vibrant uh, towards a younger audience at the time maybe a little bit of a teenage angst into the into the track itself be because of the demographic that was uh, intended for it uh, but it's also mildly tragic okay so something happened in the life of this character that is very sad it's not horrifying, okay? This is this song is not telling a story of a character that went through a horrifying thing, that is that became like a monster or something, or or that there's something supernatural about it. It's more it's telling the story more about a character that has a past or something, or or a, or an current present situation that 
is related to an everyday sort of life uh, situation, okay? So I think I'm gonna give this track an S tier. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, check out this other breakdown that I did. And if you would like to support my work further, you can check the support section in the description of this video, or you can find my Patreon and all the other links, alright? Thank you very much.